Acts chapter 25. Now when Festus was come into the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him, and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem, lying in wait in the way to kill him. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea. So here they go again. They're trying to arrange to, to get Paul on the road so they killed him. And they did this in chapter 23. Now you remember chapter 23 said, you know, over 40 men got together and said, we're not going to eat or drink until we have killed Paul. You ever ask yourself what happened to those men? Did they fulfill their deed? Or they just went and ate and drank and were liars? Now they're setting wait again for Paul. I'm not saying it's the same people, but they're doing it again, the chief priests. We want Paul dead. And then therefore said he, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man if there, if there be any wickedness in him. Well, look at that. I don't know, you know, you want to accuse him, accuse him. If he's guilty, then he's guilty. And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down to Caesarea, and next day, sitting on the judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. So, God is not allowing Paul back into Jerusalem. He is setting the thing as anywhere but. Paul going down to Jerusalem, this is what caused all this. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood around about. And many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. They're lying. Perjury. They're saying Paul did this, Paul didn't do that, Paul this, Paul that. And they couldn't prove it. They went to court without the evidence. They went to court without the proof. There is no proof. Because they don't believe in God. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They have no proof. And while he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. Listen, I didn't do anything against the law of the Jews. I didn't do anything in the temple. And I have not gone against the Roman government. So these are the three fields that the Jews are attacking Paul. The law of the Jews. Well, yeah, Paul's telling the Christians, you're not under the law anymore. Against the temple. Well, he was in there with four Jewish men under a Jewish oath. He had not brought in any Gentiles. That's a lie. And against Caesar. He's not a serpent authority to the government. He's just preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't. I don't know. He would say that Jesus is preaching Jesus as king. Have I offended anything? Have I have I offended anything at all? But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, "Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem?" And there be judge of these things before me? I'll tell you what. We're in Caesarea. Paul, you want to go back with those Jews back down in Jerusalem? Now you know what Paul is thinking now. Uh-uh. Nope. Don't want to have anything to do with that place. I am here where I am right now. I am in bonds right now. I am standing in front of a judge right now because I disobeyed God. And you know at this point, I don't know when, Paul has repented of his sins. Paul has gotten right with God, but guess what? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, but you still, God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he also reap. God has forgiven him for the sin, but he still got to reap it. That's what people don't understand. That's not what's preached in pulpits today. I always use this illustration. I like it. It's good. Whether well, save the lost, chop off your arm, get saved, 
Get right with God. Confess, Lord, you know, chopping off my arm is so stupid. What are you doing? I'm waiting for the Lord to, to grow another one back on. No. You've got to go through life armless, even though God's forgiven you, even though you're saved. He's not going to grow an arm on you because you got right. Now, God may show you some mercy and grace. He may be able to let you teach you how to do things with the other arm that you can't do with the other arm. But reaping and sowing, saved. I'm saved. I drank beer and alcohol all my life. Why all of a sudden am I saved in the hospital for a bad kidney? What, you think because you got saved? That made you clean inside? No, the wages of sin is death. That's the Christians die. You don't realize Romans 6.23, it's a great verse. For God so um, for God so. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That verse is written to Christians in context of that chapter. Then said Felix, uh, no, excuse me, then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat. Well, look at that. You, you say I go against Caesar? I stand at Caesar's judgment seat. Where I ought to be judged. Paul is acknowledging Caesar's reign, Caesar's authority. Can you imagine if a Christian today, whatever groups of the government, if you were to be brought before the the, uh, the Supreme Court of the United States, oh, they're all baby killers. Oh, they all believe in abortion. They all believe in something. Yeah, but you know what? I guarantee Caesar's judgment seat. I bet you things weren't clean there. I bet you they were vast sinners there. If you read about the Roman go government and their orgies and all their gods and the sex and all that, Paul says, I stand at judgment of Caesar. I don't care what he is. He's the ruler of this nation. I respect him for that. That's the man that wrote Romans 13. I would have you go read that and understand what Romans 13 is. You obey the power there is. Caesar carries a sword in judgment. For I be an offender. I didn't. Ought to be judged to the Jews. Have I done no wrong? As thou very knowest. I'm, I'm not guilty. I'm innocent. And I go to the next court. Another thing that our government has been bound upon, Roman, is this thing where I appeal to the next upper court, which comes out of the Bible. For if I be an offender, if I'm guilty, or have committed anything worthy of death, now watch this, death penalty, I refuse not to die. If any judge says I'm guilty, you stole me to death, you crucified me, you removed my head because of a crime that I be guilty of, I will lay my life down because of guilty. That's one of the things I I may have touched the tip of the, of the iceberg in the prison ministry, but that's one thing you, you don't really preach is... The death penalty. Paul spoke about the death penalty and said, if I'm guilty, take my life. That's a bold statement. Catholics, when someone is going to get the electric chair or get the, get put to sleep by the, the injection in this country will stand outside that prison or is done with some who oh, shall not kill Paul says if I'm guilty thou shalt kill me Romans 13 if I'm guilty of a crime Romans 13 Paul says Caesar has a sword and he ought to use it but if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I'm not going to Jerusalem. Kill me now if I'm guilty in Caesarea. If I, I am not guilty, let's go to Caesar. 
I appeal unto Caesar. And Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, Has thou appealed, has thou appealed unto Caesar? Unto Caesar thou shalt go. Guess where Paul's going? He's going to Rome. Took a long time, didn't it? And where is it again? Um, where did he ask him if you want to go, go with him back to Jerusalem? Nine. In verse nine, God gave Paul a second chance. You going to listen to me now or do you want to go back to them? Paul has definitely gotten right. See, Paul's not resting his testimony in Caesar alone. He's resting his testimony in a God that died for him. You know, God wants me in Rome. He told me I'm going to go to Rome. He told me if I come down here, I'd be bond. He told me I'd be going to jail if I came. I disobeyed God. Now I'm going to let God do my, I want to go to Rome. The only way I can get to Rome right now is by Caesar. Can I tell you, by the time we get to the end of the book, I read the end of this book, things work out great. Could have been greater if Paul did right, but we're all sinners, aren't we? And after certain days, look at days, days, years, days, years. King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. Hey, how you doing, Festus? And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, he's still in jail. About whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. Listen, I went down to Jerusalem. These Jews came to me saying, Listen, we want this man that's in Caesarea. We already read that. To whom I answered, It is not the men of the Romans to deliver any man to die. But, I mean, any man to die, before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid again. Listen, I'm not going to kill this guy until he has a fair court case when he can answer for himself. Pilate botched that one up, didn't he? Therefore, when they were come hither, without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth. Paul. Against whom, when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusation of such things as I supposed. I had, there, there were things I was thinking about, but guess what? But had certain questions against him of their own superstition. And one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. There is the resurrection of Jesus Christ again, showing up in Paul's case. Jesus is dead, but Paul says he's alive. You know what the world says about Jesus? What are you preaching about that dead man for? I tell you, he's alive. That's your opinion. No, it's faith. It's the gift. It's the fruit of being a Christian. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judge of these matters. So Festus is looking at Paul in this courtroom like, and he, he says certain questions against him of their own, I mean, where is it? And whom we execute, and the accusers stood up. They brought none I can say such things as suppose. Festus is saying, I'm standing at all of this court case, what just happened here. They are not the questions I suppose that would happen. They brought up about this man being dead that Paul says is a lie. Wait a minute, where did that come from? You see, the Jews like Jesus Christ, they had all these different things 
Oh, he said this about the temple. He said three days he's going to destroy the temple, raise it up. He proclaims to be a king, blah, 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 blah. What's the main cause we studied in the gospel? He said he was God. What is Paul's main case? The one that affirmed to say that he was God that the Jews were mad at, still mad at, Paul says he's still alive. That is angering their ship. We want this guy dead, and this guy's going around preaching he's alive. It's all we need. You know how many people followed after this Jesus in our lifetime? We don't want him around. We don't want them preaching he's still alive. We sold that, that, that veil back up. We got the people coming back. And because I doubted, he, I had no understanding, verse 21, but when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Still going to be bound. And what we're going to send you to fest, uh, the, the Caesar, you're going to Rome. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, Thou shalt hear him. I want to hear him. I want to hear what's going on. And do you see yet in Paul's rebellion? He's preaching to all these kings. He's preaching to all the... Listen, when he preaches Jesus, the Jews that hate him, that want him dead for preaching Jesus, they got to sit in that courtroom. They got to hear it over and over and over. Now, let me ask you a question. This is something I preach at the farmer's market. Do you think that these chief priests, Ananias, could ever appear before God, the white, great white throne judgment? Well, I never knew. Paul, <laughs> come here. And you know, I believe they would still have that anger, hatred, defiance against, even at the great white throne, to have Paul step up and say, just shut them up. I'm going to hell. I don't want to hear that no more. All right, we're guilty. I don't want to hear him. That's how angry they are. Wherever they are, they want to kill him. They'll go so far to, to, to have him dead, they'll lie about him. Exactly what they've done with Jesus. Exactly what they'll do to you, Christian. This is Paul's people. Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, he said. He studied under the school of the Phariseeism. He had letters from his friend, the chief priest, Go get those Christians and bring them back so we can persecute them. That man that signed those papers and loved Paul is now trying to kill him. I wish Christians would get dead about your family, friends, and co-workers. They'll turn on you. All in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, marvel not the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. And after he said, in the field, I, he said I, I, I want to hear him. So on 23... And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice, with great pomp. He said, what's that? You ever see these great royal things of England? They got all these chariots and horses, and everyone's dressed up in their nice uniforms, and all kinds of people, and this. That's what a pomp is. It's a great big show. Ever see what they do when the Pope comes to town somewhere? They just break it all out. There it is. A great pomp is you got a vehicle that can take a missile. And yet you got to have men touching the car as it's going down the street holding, holding the president with the Secret Service being all around it. All the police cars, all the motorcycle police cars, and all the people waving the flag. Yeah, there he is. That's pomp. You know what God's pomp is? He's got four creatures about his throne crying, Holy, holy, holy. That's pomp. That's a holy pomp as he sits on the throne. So great pomp, great show. Was entered into the palace of hearing, of the place of hearing, with the chief captains and the principal men of the city. Everyone's here. Everyone that is official in Caesarea is here. Paul has got himself a great audience. 
The entire word gospel of the resurrection, Christ dying for our sins, is going to be preached to Caesarea and Roman officials. The chief of the city, the principal men of the city, and Festus command, command, commandment, Paul was brought forth. Bring Paul forward. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man, about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dwelt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. Will you kill him? Can we kill him? Can somebody kill him? These Jews who are so questioned of the law, what law are they violating right now? Thou shalt not covet Paul to be killed. Thou shalt not kill. How's that one? They are coveting this man's life and they want him dead. They just broke two commandments. Aren't they great law abiders? Right now they're breaking their own law and they're accusing Paul of breaking the law. Really? But when I found that he committed nothing worthy of death. Pilate, what are you doing? I find no fault in him. Why is he standing in the courtroom? Do you realize the Jews that gave God the... the, the from Exodus to the Promised Land and even out there in the Promised Land that gave God all kinds of troubles, murmuring, complaining, griping. They're doing it to the Roman government. The Roman government hated the Jews because they were pain in the necks. And as Jesus and Paul, they want this man dead. They are heckling the government. They are bothering the government. They're going to the government. They're lying to the government. They are being pains in the necks to the government. Why? Because they wanted two men dead. And one of the men said, I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. Herod, I find no fault in him. And he still ended up on a cross. Really? What about Paul? Oh, we, we, we gave him a trial. He's innocent. We gave him a trial. He's innocent. We gave him a trial. He's innocent. Then why is he having another trial? When the judge says, I find no fault in him. Because the Jews keep bringing it up. The Jews keep bringing it up. The Jews keep bringing it up. They won't let it go. I find nothing worthy of death and that he himself has appeared, appeared, yeah, appealed to Augustus. I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. Wherefore, I have brought him forth before you, and especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination I had, I might have somewhat to write. Now, over here, when Paul is sent to Caesarea, just trying to get the name here. Claudius Lysias wrote a letter to Felix saying, hey, this is the story of Paul. This is why Paul's coming to you in chapter 23. We got over here in chapter 25, we've got Festus. He's like, I don't know what to write. This man stands in my courtroom. I find him not guilty. I've got to send him to, to Caesar, but he's not guilty. Can you try this case for me too so we can write a letter together and say, why are we sending this innocent man to Caesar? That's what's going on. Why not just let him go? Why not just let him get out of town? He's going to go to Rome. He's not going back to Jerusalem. I guarantee that. The Jews are the ones saying, hey, listen, we want him dead. Well, what if he goes, no, we want him dead. What if he, no, we want him dead. Verse 
For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not with all the signified of crimes laid against it. We don't have no crimes. But these people want this guy dead because he speaks about a man that died, but he says it's a lie. Isn't that interesting? And I know if you do any public ministry like, like Paul does, I know people in the city that you do it in. I know the police are getting phone calls. I know the mayor's getting phone calls. I know anybody who can, who would hear them crime and complain and, and gripe and, and, and have a sour puss. And yeah, we know that guy's over there preaching in the street, but there's nothing that we, we can do about it. It is legal. He's not bothering. Well, I know he's loud. I've heard that from 26 people, but still he can do what he's doing. Oh, he, he shouts infirmities about us. He makes fun of my daughter with a... Uh, no, he didn't. Stop the lying. I can tell you, I guarantee, you know, when the cops hear about us, I guarantee there's all kinds of lies told about us. You say, well, how do you know that? I live in Daytona Beach. I've been here about three years. Hmm? Six? Five years in Daytona Beach. I live in none of a good neighborhood. Not the worst, but not the best. I rarely ever see police coming down my road or on the main street right behind me. Yet, every time when I get up to stand and raise the word of God, I have every Saturday morning, I have two or three or four cop cars go right by me. I have driven here about two three miles I'm terrible on, on direction to Walmart and not ever see one cop I travel 22 miles to go to church 12 miles and 12 miles to come back 24 miles back and forth and I'm lucky if I even see one Daytona police car and yet when I get up with the Word of God with a Bible and start preaching here comes the Daytona police cars and they always do one thing when they go by. You check out my videos. They're like, yeah, he's there. Don't see him doing nothing wrong. But they wait. Some of them wave. We even had one time they had a little union meeting. Four or five police car, police officers standing there together trying to figure out, okay, let's see what he's saying to see if we can get. No, you're not. Cause I'm going to just preach the gospel. So they ended up going around shopping. Yeah. I should go there one time, you know, come home. I should, I may should do that. Come home one time, get dressed in normal clothes, and then go back over there for a couple hours. Just stand there and not say nothing in this watch. Are the cop cars going to come by? Because you say, well, maybe they come for, you know, no, 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 no. Those people are gone now. And be rest assured when you're going to do any kind of public mission, you're going to go knock on people's door, you're going to anger them. And that is the Bible norm for a public ministry. But if I were to do what people would suggest me to do, have free hot dogs and hamburgers, oh, they would love me. And you think about it, what Paul's going on right now, they want him dead because he preached Jesus. Now, what is the difference between Christianity and religion here? The people get nuisance about the Jehovah Witnesses come to their door, but no one wants a dead Jehovah Witness. Nobody wants to kill the Catholics. Nobody's trying to shut up the Mormons. Man, Mormons, you go to Salt Lake City, I'm told by people, that airport is full of people hugging and kissing because they're going off to a foreign field or they're coming back from a foreign field and no one's trying to stop them. But when you get on a street corner with a Bible, open up, begin to pray, you can set your clock to somebody within a certain amount of time is going to say something to shut you up. 
We had a guy, we had today, we had a car come come by in front of my daughter over here, me and my wife, and, and Carlos over here. Guy comes up, his head sticking out, out the window like a dog. Get away, little girl! Get away, little girl! What are you doing? Why would you say that? You wouldn't say that if I had hamburgers. My little girl, get me a hamburger. And other things. Some guy walked off cussing about, you know, you know that's, hey. And they hate Paul, not because he's Paul. They hate him because of who he's preaching, Jesus Christ. And he's got, and they got the government mad. They want to send Paul off. And you know if they would say, Paul, you get out of here, you know you run right to, no, right to Rome. You know it. And thanks to them, he's going to get up before all Caesarea. And thanks to them, he's going to preach the gospel. What if I get arrested? What if I go to jail? Use your, your honor. You want to know what they really took? You want to know why they arrested me there? Well, yeah, I, I got to know. All right, your honor, can my wife hand me my Bible? All right, your honor. Before this court of law, I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth on my Bible. I do. All right, I'll tell you what I did, your officer. Over there. For God so loved the world, and this came with the same message I, I was preaching. What's he going to do? Is that judge going to stop you in that courtroom? Because he asked what you were doing. You get the opportunity to preach everybody in that courtroom exactly what you did. How's that? You imagine telling the police officer, well, sir, you know, we've we got complaints against you. We're going to have to arrest you. Can you tell us exactly what happened? Yes. <laughs> By the way, I'll give you a little more on the way to the, on the, uh, to the jail cell and sit in the back seat. I'll give you a lot more. I'll sit in the back of that car with my, you know, officer, you need to believe on the Jesus Christ. You need to really be saved. You know, you got a dangerous job. You need, and listen, I pray for you guys. I, I, I respect you guys and your job, but you need to be saved because you just don't know what one day a sinner or a, a criminal is going to, you know, that's what Paul's doing. He, he's everywhere he's going. You know, he's chained to two men in jail. Remember, Peter was chained to two men sleeping. He, 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 can you think Paul's just going? Listen, I have not shunned all the gospel to all men. He Paul just sitting there like, listen, can't say nothing. I missed a prisoner. I missed a prisoner. You want to tell us? You know, if this is a guy. Let's say this guy said. You want to tell us your personal testimony out loud? What's this guy going to do? He can't go away. And it's all because the Jews hate Jesus Christ. And they do. You see a Jew that got saved, you see what their family and, and their relatives will do to him. And Paul, again, he's reaping what he should not have done. Had he not gone to Jerusalem, these chief priests would not care. But he's back at their doorstep. And he's back preaching the same Jesus that they hate. And God knew it. And God's protecting him, even though he's outside the will of God in his life. But he's going to get there. 